persone qui da, da questo... Dal vulcano? Dal che vulcano. Sono, siamo piccoli. Cioè si ridimensiona molto di più, perché qui noi partiamo molto forti, molto grandi. Quando arriviamo su eh, ti accorgi che non sei niente, sei piccolo piccolo. Perché la quando fa l'esplosione il vulcano va a far vedere il fuoco, diventiamo piccoli piccoli. Sia per il piacere, per la paura, per le emozioni, ma c'è una serie di, di qualcosa che tu esci dentro e che ti rendi piccolo piccolo che sei. E ti, e, e ti dà anche felicità di, di anche quello che tu sei. Perché alcuni hanno paura. Eh, ma alcuni, tutti abbiamo paura, alcuni dicono andiamo via e alcuni dicono no, restiamo, ma è la maggior parte delle persone dice restiamo perché vuol dire che hanno superato quel paura, quella, e, e gli è rimasta solamente la felicità di vedere la natura, quello è anche molto importante, perché la paura e diventiamo piccoli e là siamo tutti uguali. In quella ora non c'è ricco, non c'è povero, non siamo tutti nella stessa cosa. E parliamo, discutiamo, cioè, appena noi scendiamo cambia completamente. Il ricco diventa ricco, il povero è più povero. Cioè, questo è anche che io vedo quando porto le persone su e le porto giù. La differenza è al top siamo uguali tutti, perché abbiamo paura tutti. Quando invece scendiamo siamo molto più sicuri che non ci può succedere niente e allora ritornano le scale sociali. Questo è anche vero. È anche vero. We're small compared to the volcanoes. Volcanoes changed my life. I follow stories about people who live with the volcanoes around the world. And I want to know why. Why they live there? One day, when I was in Ecuador, I knew that the Tungurawa was active, but I was 500 meters in front of him, and really, I was shaking. I feel so small, so as my friend Sasa say. But I want to know why these people live around these volcanoes. When I went around looking for stories, I found also people who were celebrating that the volcano become alive. And they feel also alive too. Some of them, they have the fear, because in 1987, it was one of the bigger explosions and destroyed the whole village. This, on that moment, you know, it's a, cra it's a quite dangerous volcano and people just go to the church to say the mother, to the mother of the volcano, please stop them. I have been seeing many people who are losing the hope. But I met also people who really got the hope. Maria. But she got the hope to say nothing going to happen. For some ones, it was something, you know, it's a kid playing in the ash. He was thinking that it's a snow. But it's in a historical moment because the Kodopaks explode every 100 years. 80 years, of sometimes 200 years. So let's move on to Sumatra, where people live like the next door neighbor. What if you have to face your neighbor when he's coming with 750 kilometers an hour and a temperature of 1,000 degrees? What you will do? If your neighbor are burning your house, your love, and everything what you invest in? What if your neighbor throws stones to your home? What if your neighbor is also claiming his, knee, his territory back? What will you do with a neighbor like that? Will you have the patience to keep accepting these kind of things? The people from Sumatra know. 
It is no 911 you can call. Nobody want to come and rescue. But the people come back. You know, when a friend of mine, he told me, the people here in Sumatra, and they live around the volcano, they say, we are fleas on a dog. Once and once in a while, the volcano needs to shake us off. But the people still coming back because they say, there is our God. We love him. We respect him. We fear him. Life goes on. So let's move on to the next story. Let's go to Cap Verde. When I travel around the world, people ask me, where are you from? Ah, Hollandy. And I tell them the story that these people live below sea level. And people say, what? These people are crazy. You know, I don't know who is the crazy one or who is the kukuruku one. But how is to live in a crater of a volcano? You never know what the volcano want to do. Normally, the explosion will happen always on the top. But this time, you know, the volcano, uh, I don't know what happened with him, you know. But what if the volcano become a predator of your home? Okay, it was not about a home, it was an old village who become on the lava. It's lava, no, no ash, no water. Eh? So I start to ask myself, what do I want to do with these people tonight? And he said, Chris, listen, it's gone. I want to give you a couple tips. Tonight, we want to board the worm from the lava. We stay with them. No, like a campfire. Just relax. Just relax. The next day, we go to our homes, we take what is over, if there is something over, you know, and we go back to work. What will you stop you, you know, a little bit of lava? What will you do in this kind of situation? Work on the volcano of work with the volcano like the people in Iceland. The people in Iceland, they take, they work together with the volcanoes. They are not waiting for a scientist who of a vulcanology who want to tell them, you don't have to drill there. Don't drill there, because it's dangerous. But the Iceland people, they take the risk. Like in my case, I take the risk for the perfect picture. But the Iceland people, they say, let's drill there. We trust the volcano. But you never know what a volcano want to give to you. It is also tourism. They enjoy when they see the, the power coming from the earth. And the love when they, when they see the fuel, the nature. Iceland have its own fleas on a volcano. And even they pay for them. I lived in Stromboli for one year, together with my friend Sasa and many Strombolians. I went every day to the top of Idu. That's how they call it, means he. That's his God. And I totally agree with what Sasa say, you know, because I was observing how people fear when they are on the top. When they see the volcano exploding, they feel just very tiny. Because the brains, they say, I don't know, what, it, what is this? But it is something who is bigger than me. What is this? And they go. And they surrender. Just only from seeing the fire. Who coming from earth. It's Stromboli. It leaves just only 240 Strombolians. They are aligned with the volcano. They take what the volcano gives to him. Gaetano bless the net. He respects the sea. 
They are always ready to leave if a storm will become mad. The children know what to do when Edu is active. Children, they study the volcano. They feel the volcano. Whenever I turn to the city, I see many people who are disconnected with the earth. I've been seeing many friends of mine who don't know what they want with their life. They follow the fashion, they follow the big groups, and they become and they get a burnout when they are 30, 40s. And I have been telling her, listen, you have to feel nature. You have to be connected with him. They know. They know what they want. That's my job. It's passion. Just to share it with you. What these people are telling me so that I can share it with you. That's the reason why I'm here. To tell my passion. Scientists, they don't know exactly. They think that they know, but they don't know. Sassan's no, because he's feeling the volcano over the age. He's feeling the power of Earth. Thank you. <laughs>